Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. Today's video, we're working on the Samsung TV. The one I found in the trash a couple weeks ago. I asked in my last video about it, whether I should fix that TV or not. It had a bad LED module. Overwhelming response in the comments was to fix it. And guess what? In this package here, just came from China, I got the LED modules, well I assume I did. Let's see if we can get that thing working. So I guess before I start getting the TV on the bench, I should see if these are the LED modules. Now, I only paid a mere $17.73, including free shipping from AliExpress for these. And I gotta say, they came really quick as well. And really interesting is this is this is a piece of PBC pipe. So it's, instead of using cardboard that could get crushed in shipping, because you know the LED modules, as you see in the pictures, if you remember from my last video, they have this sort of angled shape to them. Anything that's crushable could be damaged, but this is definitely not being damaged. And if I shake this around, there's nothing sliding around inside. So they m hopefully did a good job with the packaging. And considering free shipping, that's amazing to me. Let's open these up. All right, there we go. So slide these out. Wrapped in foam, and I can see now at the end of the tube, there's another piece of foam down there to keep it from sliding around. And yeah, sure enough, it's a few millimeters thick PVC pipe. It's pretty amazing. So here are two modules. The top one is the new replacement one, and this bottom one is the one I took out of the TV. And they definitely look pretty much identical. Got the same mounting holes, same notches, same positioning of the LEDs. The only thing I think might be the case is the thickness of the metal. So that's one millimeter on this one. I'm using the worst caliper in the world. No, it's one millimeter as well. So they're both the same thickness. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I don't know why I thought there was a difference. So, all right. Well, that's uh, that bodes well. Two replacement modules for $17. I guess let me get out the back of the TV and we'll plug these in and see if we can get them working. So this is the TV. I'm storing it sort of uh, under the stairs here, my basement stairs. So this right here is the LED panel itself, this part. And then the, bo the bottom, this here is the actual chassis with all the controllers and everything in there. So I'm, this is fragile, the LED part, because, you know, the layers are loose here. It could all just fall apart at a moment's notice. And I really hope I didn't break it taking it apart. So I'm going to carefully move that off to the side and I'm going to pull this back part out. All right, so here's the back of the TV on the bench. Now, I was smart enough when I took this apart and stored it over there that I put all the little loose bits, like the screws and the little clips that hold the LED strips into this bag. I have a tendency to have... 50 projects going at the same time and if I don't do something like this and tape it into whatever I'm working on I might lose it and if you notice I also put the little remote control do ticky thingamajiggy right here so this is uh plugged into the back of the tv for controlling so I put that there so I wouldn't lose it as well let's plug in the strips see if they even turn on All right, strips are in place. Let me get a power cord to plug this thing in. I had to plug in the little remote control doohickey in the power cord. That goes right here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's working. Okay. So right there, we know that the fault was entirely a problem with the LED modules. I mean, it's what everyone said in the comments, and it's what I was able to figure out. All right, so now it comes time to try to reassemble this thing. So one of the things I noticed when I took these off is the, the modules were just resting up against this metal back shield, but there was nothing to help the thermal transfer. So the LEDs probably get hot and dissipate a lot of heat, especially when the backlight's cranked all the way up to maximum. And they will dissipate the heat into these aluminum LED modules. But from there, where does the heat go? Well, some of it's gonna try to transfer into this metal back panel, which is rather large. So it's a good large heat sink, but there was nothing to aid that thermal transfer. So I think I'm gonna try to fix that situation and I'm going to do that with this. This is thermal tape. 
Now I could use like thermal compound, you know, what you put on a CPU and stick that behind this module, but it's kind of messy and to be honest, it, it wears out over time. And this is thermal tape. It doesn't offer as good of a thermal transfer as for instance, the thermal paste, like the high performance stuff you might use on a, a overclocking your CPU, but this does work pretty well. It's adhesive, so it holds things down means they won't slide around. So I'm gonna put some of this under the LED modules so it helps transfer the heat into this. Will this make any difference whatsoever? I have no idea. Maybe not, maybe that, that won't help prolong the life of this. Yeah, I don't know, let's just see. Okay, both modules are taped in, so let's plug it in. Again, just double check it works. That way I'm not trying to put it back together. Okay, looking good. All right, well, I'm gonna let this run for probably 20 minutes, just to make sure that it's fully functional. Well, all right, this has been running for a while and everything is really cool to the touch. Nothing is warm whatsoever. Okay, so when I took this apart last time, there are various layers on top of the LCD panel. That's like this white part you're seeing. You have to stack them up in the correct orientation. Luckily, there are little tabs in the corners and they fit into these grooves here. So you just sort of have to line everything up. So I think this is good to go. Now, I'm gonna have to put that white plastic kind of diffuser thing on top. So I obviously did not tape this down to the metal, which might have been a mistake. So let's see if I can make this sort of stand up in the correct. I think I'm just gonna try some scotch tape here. Just tape this in a way, just ever so slightly, that way I keep those little grooves free. I bet you people are screaming at the screen that there's probably a better way to do this. People who repair TVs for a living and they know what they're doing because as you guys can tell, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I am running by the seat of my pants here. Okay, so all of the holes with the grooves look correct. I'm gonna try to lower the back onto it now. Okay, here's the back. Because it's just a matter of clipping this in. So it's resting on there, but there are plastic clips all the way around. Uh, so the next thing to do is plug in the LCD connectors into the T-Con board. Okay, well, it's connected and it's... Let's plug the power in. Okay, it's turning on. Backlight's running. Oh yeah, <laughs> look at that, there's a picture. Before I put the back cover on, I, I love the fact that there are all these holes here for different models of TVs, including a SCART connector here. You know, the back plastic sticker that covers that up. But yeah, look at all these extra ports here that just aren't used whatsoever on this particular model. All right, I hit the back together. 
Got the remote from the other one. Let's turn it on. Made the sound. Oh, I think I damaged the screen up in the corner. Uh, well, we're not seeing, the, but over in the corner here, there appears to be a problem. Take a look at this. There's a little missing piece right there. In fact, when you view it from this angle, you can see light through it. Yeah, I wonder what happened there. Would that have been something that I did taking it apart? I was pretty careful. I think you can just see this here though. Now there's the blemish. The front bezel here is quite scuffed up right on this corner. That the scuff that you see there was some type of an impact and maybe that's what caused this and probably happened after the TV died because the people were angry that the TV stopped working and they just tossed it. Yeah, here's a test pattern and you know, the whole TV actually looks good except for that one blemish, so that's really unfortunate. But otherwise, it's uh, not as bright, and I'd say the color balance is also more blue than the original one. Alright, and uh, why don't we take a look at service mode. Alright, here's service mode. So interesting is, data purchase is 2019. That's odd, because I don't know how the date uh, May 1st, 2019 would have gotten in here. Something I did? There's the panel display time. 4,573 hours. The one I have upstairs has about 660 hours on it. That's 190 days of on time this thing had. So... Clearly this TV was well used. That's probably one of the reasons why the LEDs had failed on it. All right, so the TV cleaned up really nicely. It actually has not a single scratch on the LCD itself. All right, let's compare the repair TV, which is this one on the left, to my reference TV, which is the same exact model, unmodified, original Samsung LEDs and everything. So you can definitely see in this picture that the new repaired one has a cooler color temperature. Now I'm in service mode, which completely resets all the picture settings. So these are both in exactly the same picture white balance settings. And this one, Definitely, you see a bit more of a blue cast, even on the camera. To my eyes, it's definitely apparent. From a uniformity perspective, I gotta say the camera picks up the irregularities more than human eyes do. So this looks like it's got a bright spot here, and that one is, does as well. So they're both not great. I'd say that they're pretty much equivalent. In fact, there's a bit of a dark spot that's visible here, and it looks essentially identical on the, the TV on the right. Ultimately, I'd say that the backlight repair was really good. You can easily go into the settings menu and adjust the white balance a little bit and just turn down the blue to compensate for the extra blue LEDs. The rest of the colors that you have available still look really good, no issues, very vibrant and clear color reproduction on both TVs. And I'd say from a brightness perspective, I thought originally the replacement LED modules weren't as bright as the originals, but Looking at this, they basically look identical to me. There might It might be just ever so slightly dimmer on the new replacement modules, but honestly, when I look at them side by side like this, I am unable to really tell a difference. All right, so let's talk conclusions. Was my repair of this a success? I'm gonna have to say yes and no. Unfortunately, the blob on this TV is a crack in the glass. Upon closer inspection, I can see that, that this is a crack, and I took this TV apart and inspected more closely, peeling up the layers of the backlight, and with a flashlight shining through the LCD, there's definitely a crack in the glass. That is not gonna be repairable, and unfortunately, the blob may spread over time as the panel heats up and cools down, so the longevity of this TV, even though the blob is minor and just up in the corner, may not be particularly good. Now, I don't know if I made the crack when I took this TV apart for the first time, or it was there before I started, 
But I think the moral of the story is, if you find a trash pick TV like I did, it's probably a good idea to inspect the panel very closely and try to go over every inch of it. I didn't really do that. I did a very quick and dirty inspection, reviewing all the footage and pictures I have of this TV from before I took it apart. I never really focused on that upper corner of the screen because I just wanted to know if this is something I did or it was there already. Now taking apart these types of TVs, there are all sorts of little plastic clips you have to release all the way around the perimeter and that could easily have caused the breakage because I was using a screwdriver and maybe I wasn't very careful. Now I know how to take these TVs apart, well at least this TV, when I took it apart the second time around, I know what I'm doing, I know how to be careful, and I didn't cause the crack to get any worse. So I'm confident at this point, like if I had to take this TV apart to replace its backlight at some point in the future, I'll be able to do it without ruining the screen and making it worse. Now when I inspect closely that corner of this TV, I do see that the front bezel is a little bit scuffed and worn right in that spot. Now this TV, like I said, was found in the trash and it wasn't just sitting on the ground nicely on its stand, it was actually thrown into a bin on its side with full of other stuff. And if I recall, that corner was actually the one that was facing down into this trash bin. So it may easily have happened at that point. Am I disappointed that I didn't get another perfectly good working TV out of this repair? Yeah, a little bit, because it would have been cool to spend 17 bucks to get a working 32 inch 1080p TV. So I'm going to try to turn lemons into lemonade, and even though there's a little bit of a blob with that crack in the corner, I'm going to try to use this TV. Watching this TV recently over the last day after I repaired it, it's not really that distracting with that blob off in the corner. You kind of don't notice it after a few minutes of watching the TV. And while I wouldn't want to use this as a main TV, in a guest room or maybe in my garage for when I'm working on stuff out there, it'd be perfect for that. So anyway, I hope you found this Trash Pick TV repair interesting, and if you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you found it annoying and stupid, you know what to do, give me a thumbs down. You can subscribe for more videos, and of course, put your comments and questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Bye.